Hello, athletes. Welcome and thank you for tuning into the Coach Katie Danger podcast recorded live from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm your host, Coach Katie Danger, U.S. Army veteran, fitness coach, and founder of Red H Nutrition. Here's a fact for you. 99% of us are not elite athletes. We're individuals from all backgrounds, juggling life's priorities, including jobs, our families, their needs, and trying to find time to take care of ourselves. Every single week when you tune in, I'll be discussing clear, concise, and actionable strategies you can use to get the most from your fitness, nutrition, and mindset so you can optimize your life without compromising your time. So athletes, settle in and get comfortable. I'm here to educate, inspire, empower, and entertain you to help you enjoy the unique fitness journey that you are on. Hey again, athletes. Welcome to episode number 46 of the Coach Katie Danger podcast. Once again, you guys, I am so grateful and humbled that you would choose to spend your time with me on this podcast. A few weeks ago, I recorded a show that highlighted the top supplements for men and the specific needs that a man's body has when it comes to nutrition and supplements. And this week for this episode, ladies, I heard you. I heard you loud and clear. So today I'm taking the time and I'm going to share with you my top 10 supplements for women and your needs. But first, but first, but first, I have a really cool new free coaching program that I want to share with you. It's my three-point personalized supplement assessment, and it is an easy way to find out what the top three supplements are to add to your nutrition routine. So head on over to yourfitnesssupplements.com and you can take that free assessment and find the perfect safe and effective supplements that are tailored just for you. You're even gonna get an email summary so you can take action immediately. And I'm really excited to share this with you. I know it's gonna help clarify how you can get the most from your subs now. One of the biggest pushbacks I get when it comes to navigating the complex world of supplements is that people just don't know what to take for their goals. They know that there is a lot of stuff to choose from, but it's really hard to get specific when, you know, you go into a traditional GNC or another supplement store and there's this wall to wall bottles and pills and powders. Okay, so this three point assessment, it's got you covered. It is easy. It is quick. It is fast. 30 seconds. All you got to do is go to yourfitnesssupplements.com. So should we just get into the meat and potatoes of the episode? Episode number 46 is what are the 10 best supplements for women? Now, contrary to what the episode about men's supplement was, is a woman's body also requires certain vitamins and minerals to help it function optimally. And the great news is, is that a well-balanced whole food diet can reduce the need for a lot of supplementation. The thing I'm always going to tell you is with supplements, First and foremost, focus your nutrition on a whole food, well-rounded, high-quality fats, high-quality protein, high-quality carbohydrates, no processed sugars. Focus your efforts on a good nutrition plan first, whole foods, right? Then, then we start adding supplements. We start to optimize and really put your puzzle together in the pieces that make sense for you. And for women, supplements can be valuable to any healthy diet. It's important that women understand that there's differences for men to women in the recommended daily allowances. It's RDA. You'll see that acronym RDA on the, on the back of a lot of bottles or a lot of literature. That just means recommended daily allowance. And this RDA is what is said that women should follow to get the most from the supplements that they ingest. So I want you to consider these 10 best supplements. And there is a transcript If you get this podcast from my website, coachkatiedinger.com, you can actually get a transcript. So, you know, if you're not keeping notes or you want to refer back to this, you can always check out the transcript notes because then that will help you a lot. So here's what we got going on. Vitamin D. You want to start at vitamin D. And most women are deficient in this really important vitamin. Now we get it from sunlight, but like, what if it's winter? What if you're bundled up all the time? So if you don't spend a lot of time outdoors on a regular basis, especially if it's winter, got to get some vitamin D and a recommended daily allowance is about 40 micrograms or 600 international units, IU. IU is the acronym, international unit or 40 micrograms. I'm not really sure on why some supplements choose international units versus uh, the label of micrograms. I prefer micrograms because it's like an actual scientific unit. International unit seems to be something that was used as a standardization you know, to kind of cover all the bases. I just really don't like it as much. So 40 micrograms or 600 international units. I'm not going to go off on that tangent anymore. The next one you need to consider, full spectrum multivitamin. Now, multivitamin is really, really important. We've got lots of processes that go on behind the scenes. You know, I'm not even talking about the big ones like digestion and and using your brain for energy or exercise, you know, you know, uh, 
locomotion and motor function. I'm talking about small microprocesses, cellular processes. That's where the multivitamin and the micronutrients come in. So a simple full spectrum multivitamin that's clean and is whole food plant-based, that's going to be one of the best supplements for women. Calcium. Calcium is a primary component of bones and osteoporosis is a real threat to women, especially as we age. For women under 40, look at getting 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day. And for those of you who are over 50, you want to aim at about 1,200 milligrams per day. So women under 50, 1,000 milligrams. If you're over 50, shoot for that 1,200 milligram plus per day. Now fiber. I cannot talk enough about fiber. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, has labeled as fiber as a nutrient of public concern, meaning that we're just not getting enough in our diets. And fiber is great for gut motility, and it also may help lower your cholesterol. There are certain types of fiber that also serve as food for gut bacteria. We want to keep that good gut bacteria so we don't have a lot of bad that proliferates. If you're not eating a healthy diet with fiber-rich foods, a supplement can help, a really good green supplement. The current recommendation for women is 25 grams of fiber each and every day. If you have a hard time getting in 25 grams of fiber, look at an organic green supplement. I'm going to give you a hint, hint here, and you should check out Red H Nutrition's Super Greens for that. Mix as well. Tastes great. You don't got to pinch your nose to drink it. Check that out. But fiber, very, very important. Hey, how's your current training program? One of the most underrated ways to train is body weight movements, squats, push-ups, pull-ups, anything without a barbell and just using your body as a resistance is a body weight movement. Because of their importance, I created the Body Weight Muscles Training Program, and the program consists of body weight workouts that anyone can do anywhere because you don't need a barbell or a gym to do these workouts. And the best part is the entire program is free, and you can get your copy at bodyweightmuscles.com. So head on over to bodyweightmuscles.com after this podcast is over, download the program, and start adding body weight workouts to your routine so you can build real functional strength. All right, and then after fiber, what we have is krill oil. Now, while you can live without most dietary fats, it is essential to consume some fatty acids. These are most easily consumed in fatty acid supplements, fatty fish, or like fish oil supplements. Now, I say krill oil because I think it is a better choice than your all-in-one fish oil. You know, if you see fish oil, you're like, oh, you know, fatty acids, we get it. But krill oil, I like krill better, and here's why. So krill is a smaller organism on the food chain, which means... Okay, like our oceans are polluted, even if it comes from what they say is non-polluted waters, you know, ocean water supposed to be clean. Our water's polluted. There is environmental pollution. We live in 2021, okay? So what I'm suggesting is with krill, since it's a smaller organism, it's going to be lower on the food chain. It's not going to have basically lived as long or has gone through many transitions, you know, from one fish eating one fish to another. Krill is at the bottom of that food chain. So What we're doing is we're surmising that it is less contaminated with like heavy metals um, than what a typical fish oil supplement would be. That's why I say get krill oil. It's probably the least contaminated of the fish since it's at the bottom of the food chain. Now let's talk about probiotics. Many, many, many health issues start in the gut. I believe that if you have a healthy gut, that's like the genesis of everything good or bad that happens in your health. A healthy gut also really highly increases the chance that you have a positive mindset at well. I'm telling you, there is a gut-brain connection. And off the top of my head, I cannot remember the podcast episode number, but I have talked about this at length, the gut-brain health connection. So scroll through my old podcast and find that episode if you need any more information on just how important having a healthy gut is. But a good probiotic, let's talk about what a good probiotic looks like, right? So there's gut flora healthy bacteria that lives in our gut. And we want to make sure that we have an abundance of it. And the top three gut flora in our gut is B. bifidum, L. acidophilus, and L. casei, or lactobacillus casei. Now, those are the three probiotic you want to look for when you're looking at a probiotic and making sure that it has, one, a spectrum of good bacteria, but enough to cover what is the majority in your gut as well. So probiotic healthy, health starts in the gut, get a good probiotic. Vitamin B12. Now, vitamin B12 does a lot of things in the body. And a couple of really important things are it builds healthy DNA and it helps you regenerate healthy red blood cells. If you eat a lot of meat already, you probably don't need to supplement with vitamin B12. But, and I say but, if you are a woman over the age of 35, 
we tend to be deficient in vitamin B12. I don't think there's a lot of women out there who are strictly carnivores. And especially if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, really supplementation with B12 becomes a necessity. And it's also one of the best supplements for women in general. Now, I did some research on this, and the Mayo Clinic recommends that all adults consume at least 2.4 micrograms of vitamin B12 a day. Vitamin B12 is unique because it is water-soluble. So the great thing is you can't overdose on a water-soluble vitamin like B12. So what I'm saying with this is supplement with vitamin B12. Likelihood is even if you're not deficient in it, it's not going to be toxic to you. It's just going to get flushed out you know, in, in, in your urine. But a deficiency of vitamin B12 could mean a lack of energy. You know, you don't have enough red blood cells to carry the oxygen to your body, to your brain. Cardio exercise becomes hard. And then also if with the DNA aspect, when we're trying to regenerate muscle tissue, repair muscle tissue after exercise, if your DNA is not replicating and you're not creating new muscle cells, repairing old muscle cells appropriately, you're just not recovering as effectively and optimally as you should be. So vitamin B12, 2.4 micrograms a day, that is what a woman needs to take in my recommendation. Then let's look at iron. Now, especially if you're on your period, you're going to lose blood and blood contains iron. One of the primary functions of iron is to transport oxygen in the blood. So adding an iron supplement, it may be necessary. And for active women, it's really one of the best supplements you can find. And a lot of times you don't need to take iron on your own. You could find it in a multivitamin, so you get a spectrum. You know, I'm, we're coming out with 10 supplements here. You don't necessarily need to take all of them all in separate forms. A good multivitamin can cover a lot of the bases that we talk about here today. But for iron, if you're premenopausal, it's advised that you consume at least 18 milligrams a day. If you are postmenopausal, about eight milligrams a day. So you go from more iron necessary in premenopause and then less in postmenopause. Melatonin. You might have heard of melatonin before because it's in a lot of sleep supplements, but melatonin is a hormone that is part of the sleep process and it's absolutely one of the best ups for women. If you sleep well, if you're already sleeping well, melatonin may be one of those supplements you don't need to consider. However, if you're listening and you do have sleep issues, you can't sleep, you can't stay asleep, you toss and turn, melatonin could help you fall asleep and stay asleep. So to start, what I recommend is one to two milligrams, 30 minutes before bed. Now, most supplements come in five milligrams. Five milligrams is kind of that standard dose. You really don't want to take any more than 15 milligrams of melatonin. You probably have a lot of other underlying issues if you're taking that much. So I recommend starting small, maybe cut the pill in half, but five milligrams is kind of where the majority of people who take melatonin are going to find their doses at. And then there's folate. For pregnant women, this is a necessity. It helps prevent birth defects. And folate does have other several very important roles in the body. If you're a woman and you are not pregnant and do not plan on becoming pregnant, you should look at 400 micrograms a day of folate. If you are becoming pregnant or if you plan to become pregnant within the next, I would say, six months or you're already pregnant, aim for 800 micrograms a day. Now, the best place to start is if you're taking current medications, you always want to talk to your doctor, run these things past him or her and make sure you're getting his or her advice. It's also important to realize that, you know, you can get too much of a good thing. Just because I've listed 10 supplements here, that doesn't mean that you should be considering taking all 10. For example, I did mention that if you're not having sleep problems, you know, melatonin is not going to be for you. It's not going to be necessary. And also, if you're eating a whole food nutritious diet, a lot of these supplements might not be necessary for you as well, or if you're not as active. That's where personalization comes in when it comes to the best supplements for women. So you have the list of the top 10, and then you might be wondering, you know, well, where do I start? I just mentioned maybe you need all of them, maybe you don't. Like, where are we here? More than likely, you don't need all of them. If you want a great place to start, go to my three-point personalized supplement assessment. I want you to start there. It's yourfitnesssupplements.com yourfitnesssupplements.com. And you're going to get my top three recommendations. And it's all based off a few specific, very pointed questions about you. I want you to start there, yourfitnesssupplements.com. And knowledge is power. So you've got all this knowledge now, and that is going to make you a more discerning user of supplements. And that's what this podcast and this episode is all about. Remember, once you get the supplements that you've been recommended, after you take that three-point assessment that I told you at yourfitnesssupplements.com and that you're a VIP listener to this podcast, go over to redhnutrition.com. Use my specific coupon code, 
coach Katie Danger, all one word. And you're gonna save 30% on your first order of supplements. So I've given you the list of the 10 best supplements. Now you can go to yourfitnesssupplements.com, take my three-point assessment, then head on over to Red H Nutrition, stock up on the supplements that I recommended. It is that easy and that simple how to start optimizing your nutrition and get the best supplements for your goals as a woman. All right. Well, athletes, that is all for episode number 46. Next week, make sure to join me. Episode number 47 is gonna be coming up hot off the presses. But until then, I want you to keep training hard. This is Coach Katie Danger, over and out. This is the podcastfactory.com.